Okay, so in this problem we're told highway curves are marked with a suggested speed. If this speed is based on what would be safe in wet weather, estimate the radius of curvature for a curve marked 50 kilometers per hour. Use uh, table 5-1. So let's go ahead and understand what's going on here with a picture. So uh, we have a top and front view of this car. So th imagine this is our car here. Obviously, it's going to be going in a curve like this, right, around in a circle, you can imagine. And if this is the front view of the car, uh, what we're going to want to do is label some things on it in a second. But you can imagine it's traveling straight at us uh, if this is the front view, and then it's going to be going straight around the circle like this. Uh, we're also given the velocity of this car, right? So what is marked safe is 50 kilometers per hour. And then in order to do this problem, we're going to need the coefficient of static friction. And they don't give us the value, but they tell us to use table 5-1. And so if you look at that table there, uh, the value we're going to use is 0.7. So uh, the coefficient of static friction is 0.7. The reason we're using uh, mu sub s, right, static friction and not uh, kinetic friction, is because uh, we're looking at it at the point where it doesn't slide. So if it was sliding, then we would use kinetic because it's actually moving. But we're trying to figure it out at the point where it doesn't slide. So that's why we're using static. And uh, in this scenario, highways, we're just using rubber on wet concrete. So that's where we get this value from. And so uh, how are we going to solve for this problem? So the way we're going to do it is first by drawing the free body, uh, free body diagram acting on this car here. So if we go ahead and do that, we know there's a force of gravity which acts straight down, which is mg. And then we also know going straight up, there is the normal force which acts opposite uh, to the ground perpendicular to it, right? Newton's third law. And so those are the really the main two forces acting on it here. Um, and so when we sum the forces, right, if we sum the forces, we know that, or sorry, there's one more force acting on it. I forgot about it. We have the force of friction, which is going to be impeding motion here. So the force of friction is basically going to be what is going to stop it from sliding. So uh, we know it's basically going to slide outwards like this. So the force of friction is going to act this way. So the force of friction is going to stop it from sliding outwards. So uh, those are your three forces. And so what we're going to do is sum the forces in the X. So sum of the forces in the X. And uh, right, so when I'm referring to X, just keep in mind I'm referring to everything along this axis here. So the force of friction, this would be your Y axis. So just keep that in mind. This is your X, this is your Y. So we know that some of the forces in the X are going to be equal to MA. But keep in mind that we're going in a circle like this, which means we're using centripetal acceleration. So uh, there's centripetal force. We have to use MA uh, sub C because it's going in a circle like this. And so this basically tells us MAC equals. And then if we sum the forces in the X, notice the only force here is the force of friction. So uh, I'm going to choose going to the right to be positive. So uh, like that. So F force of friction goes to the right. So it's positive. Um, and so notice that the centripetal force here has to be equal to the force of friction. And so you should know what the centrifugal force is, which basically points is you can kind of imagine it as the force that pulls you outwards, right? So if you're traveling in a circle like this, you can get the feeling, right? If you're in a car, it's going to push you to the other side when you make a sharp turn that pulls you outwards. And that's what we call the centrifugal force. And that's got to be equal to this force of friction in order for us not to slide. Because if, if it's greater, we would just slide, right? So they need to be equal. So that's where we get this idea. And so the centrifugal force is also equal to the same as the centripetal force. They're the same value. They're just pointed in opposite directions. So you should know centripetal points inwards and then the centrifugal uh, points outwards. And so it's not really a force, but we just imagine it as one. So essentially, the main trick to this problem is knowing the force of friction has to be equal to uh, your uh, MAC, right? So your centrifugal force. So uh, you should know the force of friction is equal to mu sub k times the normal force. So MAC equals mu sub k times F sub n. Right. And so notice the normal or the normal force. If we want to solve for it, you should know by now it's just going to be equal to mg. But I'll show you how we find it. So we know the sum of the forces in the y equal ma. And so we know that we're not moving in the y. Therefore, if you're not moving in a direction, your velocity is zero, which results in your acceleration being zero. So if this value is zero, um, right, the whole sum of the forces is zero. And that makes sense. The forces cancel each other out. So that's why we're not moving in it. And then, as I said before, F sub n is positive. So adding up the forces, F sub n is upwards. 
but mg's down, so it's minus. This basically tells us, moving this to the other side, that f sub n is equal to just uh, the force due to gravity. So really, we have mac equals mu sub k times mg. So what you should notice here is that your masses are going to cancel here. And then keep in mind what we wanted to solve for. We wanted mu sub k. Uh, we don't know what the centripetal acceleration is. Or sorry, we don't want... What we want is the radius. So sorry about that. I made a mistake. We want the radius. But how can we get the radius from this equation? So you should know the formula for centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. right? So now what we can do is just relate this equation, right? plugging in what the formula for uh, the centripetal acceleration is and really just solve. So notice we know the velocity uh, for this curve is, what value is it? It is 50 kilometers per hour. We know the coefficient of, so I've been writing mu sub k here, it's mu sub s. Sorry about that. This is mu sub s. I just wrote it by habit, sorry about that. But this is mu sub s because we're dealing with it in a static, right? It's not moving, we're finding where it's not going to slide. So that's why we're using that value. That's a mistake, sorry about that. But keep in mind, uh, we're using mu sub s there. So this value is still correct. Um, and uh, yeah, so if we want to solve for r, we just really have to get it by itself and then solve. So if I would multiply both sides by r, I have v squared uh, g and then r like that. And then I would just divide by this. And then we just have the formula for r. So r is equal to the velocity squared divided by the coefficient of static friction multiplied by g. Uh, notice that the velocity, though, they give it uh, they give it to us in kilometers per hour, and we need it in meters per second. So uh, if we want to fix that, we know 50 kilometers per hour is equal to, there is one kilometer for every 1,000 meters. So now we have it in meters per hour, right? Those cancel like that. Uh, and then to get rid of hours, we know one hour is 60 minutes. And then one minute has 60 seconds. So your hours will cancel, your minutes will cancel, and then just perform this calculation and we'll have it in meters per second, which is what we want. So let me get my calculator out here. We have 50 times 1,000 divided by 60 and then divide by 60 once more. So about 13.889, we'll say, meters per second. And now we have it in the correct units. So everything's in the right way we want it. So 13.889 squared divided by mu sub s, which we found in the textbook to be 0.7. Um, and then g is just the acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant value. So plugging this in, uh, I'm just going to use the exact value in my calculator for the velocity divided by 0.7 times 9.8. And so when you do this, you're going to get 28.1197. So you can round however you'd like. Uh, I'm just going to round to 28.1. So 28.1 meters. Uh, that's going to go ahead and be the radius for this curve, assuming you have a uh, coefficient of static friction of 0.7 and a velocity of 50 kilometers per hour. So when they ask, they're asking for the, right, so what would be safe for wet weather? So basically, if it's anything greater than this value, right, it wouldn't work out, right? We would slip. So this is finding the radius for these conditions in which you have a velocity of this and a coefficient of static friction of this. What radius can we allow? So this radius would allow us to have safe conditions here. And uh, yeah, so just a quick overview. All you did was sum the forces in the X and you knew the force of friction has to be equal to uh, the centrifugal force here, MA sub C. And then it's really just a matter of solving it in or solving it and uh, substituting this value in for it. And uh, yeah, so this is gonna be your answer 28.1. And hopefully you found this video useful.